This rearmed unit flopped. This could have been one of the most broken units in the game, but now nobody uses them because they're irrelevant. Today, we're ranking every single rearmed unit so you can figure out which units aged really poorly, which units will age the best, and who is truly worth your precious, precious orbs. I'm ranking everyone from modes like Arena, Aether Raids, and Summoner Duels, and most importantly, I ranked everyone strictly based on how well they'll perform against the meta in the potential far future. While I debated factoring in their value as a fodder factory or their skills, I later decided against it because really, the only person who can determine that value is you, based on your goals, your specific summoning habits, and how you play this game. Although I heard using your arcane inheritance on that subscribe button will give you good luck. And if you're enjoying the video so far, you can subscribe so you don't miss out. Ultimately, I'm not ranking someone higher or lower based on how good they are as a skill factory for their class or how good their weapon is on anyone but themselves. And with that in mind, it's no surprise who makes their way to the very bottom. In last place, we have Rearmed Ganglot, the worst rearmed unit in the game. It's fitting that she rules the dead, because that's the state she finds herself in the most, when she has absolutely no preference special, skill, assist, just nothing. Meaning she's nothing more than a generic melee infantry, the last possible class you'd want to be generic, because she is in the most competitive archetype in all of Fae. Her weapon is definitely one of the worst premium weapons ever made, when it only gives her slaying, special charging, 7 HP healing, follow-up denial, and that's it. Even the effects that she gets aren't unique when all of them can be outsourced, and you don't even want to use her weapon when you'd rather give her a random axe from a throwaway Tempest Trial unit. And we've reached a point where something you can get with Grails is better than something you have to spend orbs for. I still don't love melee infantries as a class, and especially ones that are as useless as her. And I guess your only option is to use her as a slow tank, but with not a single thing unique to her name, I just don't see a single day you'd willingly use her over any of the other broken Omni tanks in the game. Her speed stat is what I call monkey in the middle, or to put it nicely, it outright sucks and it's actually worse than the generic trash you get in the 3 star pool. And while I almost put her higher because of the goose friend, being just a little bit more tanky doesn't really matter when she can't do anything and she will still die to everything. She is just so unremarkable in every single way, and I don't know how you can argue a unit with quite literally not a single thing unique, useful, or uniquely useful about them isn't the worst rearmed unit in the entire game. Then we have both Rearmed Lyft and Rearmed Alfred, two units who are so equally bad in every single way. The reason why they're tied is because their kits and their stat spread is nearly identical, meaning they're both just as bad as each other. They both get a guaranteed follow-up, a follow-up denial, special charging guard, and that's it. And I think Ganglot must have rubbed off on Lyft because he sucks almost as much as her. Even IS knows he's not good because they keep slapping him on those rearmed banners every time they're feeling stingy, which is very often because Bro was the only rearmed unit on two of these. Lyft is one of the few units with both a preference special and a preference skill, which sounds cool at first, until you actually look at his kit and realize he is not good. His preference special heals some HP and boosts damage by his own defense, which is just funny when you realize it's not only 4 years old, but if you ignore the healing, then it's just a reskinned bonfire with a different name, one of the most easily accessible and common specials. And in fact, it's so accessible that you can also get bonfire from Alfred, which is just kind of weird and only now now did I realize they made a blue rearmed lift, named him Alfred, and sold it to us twice. Because the only unique thing about Alfred is that other than guard, he just gets a puny amount of stats, all of which means absolutely nothing in a day and age where you can get a bajillion more stats and effects just by breathing. Which when I think about it, Alfred has trouble doing, so at least it's accurate to engage. Slaying, a guaranteed follow-up attack, follow-up denial, guard, and special charging is nice, I guess, but it's really not a lot. And while their kits were cool at the time relative to the other inheritable weapons, it's really just not a good weapon today, and it's not like they've made anything better since then, meaning Lyft and Alfred have only gotten worse. Both Lyft and Alfred are down here not only because of their horrible stat spread, but they're both slow, bulky calves, which is one of the worst archetypes to be in. Although being a cav is the only reason why they're not at the bottom, and I value that bit of range more than I like melee infantries. But I was debating between putting them and Ganglot at the bottom for a very long time, and I wouldn't disagree with any arguments putting them lower if you like melee infantries more than calves, because when both of their preference skills and weapons just suck, there's really nothing unique, useful, or uniquely useful about this dynamic duo. Then we have Rearmed Aider. 
This is the third bad melee cav in a row, except this time around, she's a beast unit, which is actually worse than being a sword or a lance calf. And the only reason why she's not at the bottom is because her weapon and her preference skill gives her five effects, which is more than Lyft and Alfred's four. It's not a high bar to clear, but this is what we're dealing with. She gets special charging, only if she's solo or with one ally, and then her preference skill gives her healing if she uses an offensive special. It's not a lot, nor is it really unique, and it doesn't really do much when her weapon only gives her a stat swing, speed-based damage reduction, speed-based true damage even with AoEs, and speed-based null follow-up. Although, Aider is actually one of the best users of her weapon since she came out during the speed creep jump of Book 7, meaning she's one of the fastest units we've ever gotten in this game. But the biggest issue for her is that she's a cavalry beast in a meta where it's very competitive to be a cav and it's very questionable to be a beast when beast units are locked out of good skills. And I also hate that she has a near solo condition on her weapon in particular. It's not a hard condition to hit, but in a meta where we have units getting effects just by breathing, you really don't want to have to deal with strict positioning. And while her kit is barely better than Alfred and Lyft, and while she's technically more unique than Ganglot, the reality is that she doesn't have a lot of effects and the ones she does have are so unimpactful and not unique compared to any meta unit even remotely worth caring about, meaning she cannot do anything and she will die to everything. And also, I really don't care about her weapon, which sucks for Aider in particular since she's only getting worse and worse and it will probably take us like 10 more years before they make another beast calf weapon. She wasn't that good when she came out and she's definitely not good today. And I just don't see any reason to run her over any beast unit, any melee cavalry unit, or really any unit at all. Then we have rearmed Ophelia. I'm already very critical of infantry mages, and it's no surprise why I do not like this infantry mage when she's as unique as Ganglot, or in other words, she is not unique at all. Her stat spread is borderline horrendous with monkey in the middle speed, and actually, all of her stats are kind of awkward and milling. And to make things even worse, her weapon only gives her a quicken pulse effect, which I like a little, but not that much now when you can give people the Marth emblem for slaying. And it's also not enough to cover up the fact that the weapon does basically nothing else, since otherwise, it only gives a guaranteed follow-up attack and it neutralizes her penalties. I guess you could use Ophelia as an AoE nuker, but there's countless better ranged infantries to use as an AoE nuker option, one of which is also a rearmed unit, and her weapon is so bad and she's only using it because she was forced to, since it was the only inheritable red tome that isn't a complete snooze fest, until they released one of the most stupid and ridiculous weapons they've ever made in this game, an inheritable red tome that gives you pre-combat damage that stacks with every other source of pre-combat damage that also grants you bonuses and stats just for fun. Meaning not even Ophelia wants her own weapon when she can run this instead. I only put her here because if you replace the kit of everyone in E tier, then at max investment, I'd rather have a generic infantry mage than all of these guys when infantry mages are some of the most powerful nukers in the game. Although if you like melee infantries or calves more than you like ranged nukes, I can see the arguments for putting her below even Ganglot, because Ophelia is only getting worse and worse, and I don't know how many times I have to say this, but when there's not a single thing unique, useful, or uniquely useful about Ophelia, there's no way I can put her anywhere but down here. All five of these guys are by far the worst three-armed units in the game. The only thing these guys are good at is being unimpactful or straight up bad, and they do not belong in anywhere but E tier. Then we have rearmed Alchrist, yet another ranged infantry. While he's a little bit more unique than Ophelia, it's really not a high bar to clear when Ophelia is not unique at all. And unfortunately for Alchrist, I still don't like him when his preference skill just inflicts penalties and neutralizes guard. And otherwise, there is really nothing else unique about him either. He's technically unique on paper, but hardly in practice, making him almost as bad as everyone in E tier. Although his weapon is actually pretty good, since it has offensive null follow-up, it neutralizes his penalties, and it has a pretty awesome desperation effect. And Alchrist actually likes his weapon quite a bit, since he's one of the fastest units we've gotten in this game. In general, bow units are quite good just by inherently having flying effectiveness, and Alchrist even has build flexibility, since he can use his bow or an inheritable bow with special jumping of all things. And in the end, I put him in D tier just by his nature of being slightly more unique, his stats spread being pretty good, and because he's just lucky there are good bows for him to use, unlike Ophelia. But I almost put him at the bottom next to her for how unimpactful he is, even though he's got what I call rearmed unit privilege, meaning he can keep his preference skill while using any potentially broken echo skills they make in the future. His preference skill isn't really unique or interesting or useful in the first place. You hardly even care about his ability to keep it when it barely does anything, and he's far from the best ranged infantry in the game, and he's not even the best ranged infantry on this list. Beyond just penalties and guard, there's really nothing that makes Alchrist unique 
useful or uniquely useful either. And he also doesn't support the team. So I only see him getting worse and worse and I struggle to think of anything really remarkable about him. And I guess Alcrest would agree with me. Ultimately, I don't know why I'd run him over any other bow user or really any unit at all. Then we have Rearmed Reinhardt. You might be surprised that I put him this low, but if you look at this kit, you'll soon realize that he's as impactful as Alcrest, which isn't saying much when he's really just a ranged nuke that is bad at being a ranged nuke. His preference skill gives him true damage, but not when using AoEs, which sucks. And then it gives him a puny amount of DR and like, who cares? And if he moves two spaces or more, then he only gets player phase brave. You might think that this is decent, but actually this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in this game. Maps are filled with trenches that stop calves from moving, meaning you may never get to use this player phase brave, which is also just stupid when you realize this is a worse condition than his base version from seven years ago that didn't need to do anything to activate his brave hit. Even if he gets his brave hit off, who cares since his weapon is just whatever. It really only gives him null follow up, special charging, neutralizes some bonuses, and actually, Reinhardt himself doesn't even want to run his weapon when he'd rather use Plumeria's blue tome instead. This guy needs so much help, and I wasn't fond of him even when he came out. Because even at his best, he's supposed to be a ranged nuke, but he has absolutely no DR piercing or really anything at all. On release, he not only came out less than a month after Winter Yunaka, but he's a worse ranged nuke than Yunaka, and even now, Yunaka isn't that good anymore. So what does that say about Reinhardt? I only put him here because he's a ranged calf, and even with the trenches, I like ranged calves more than I like ranged infantries. But when he's just a ranged calf that does not support the team, and he fails to do his only role, why would I run this guy? He cannot do anything, he will die to everything, and you definitely don't want to run him either. Both Alcrest and Reinhardt suck, but at least they're not as bad as everyone in E tier. While they're technically more unique, it's not a high bar to clear. They are still not good, and they should feel right at home in D tier. Then we have Rearmed Guinea, yet another bad ranged calf, although her kit is actually kind of interesting. Her preference skill inflicts Discord and Flash on a pretty big radius, and if she uses an offensive special, then it also gives her special jumping. Already, her kit is better than all of E tier, and she supports the team more than Reinhardt, but that's really the only thing she has going for her, because offensively, she is absolutely not good. Her weapon only gives her a stat swing, a guaranteed follow-up attack, and special charging. Not to mention that her speed stat sucks, meaning she's basically irrelevant as an offensive threat. She's nothing more than a sitting source of discord and flash, and how much you value her will depend on how much you value the specific support that she gives. Flash is nice, I guess, but Null C Disrupt has never been more popular and common because of the rise of sweep effects and meta threats like Duel Leon, and it's considered one of the best B skills you can run on an Omni tank other than Lagoo's friend. Then, Discord isn't horrible, since it debuffs your team when the enemy has their allies close together. But if you really wanted someone to inflict Discord, there's another unit who can do that while also flying and do so much more, including also inflicting Flash from the special. To make things even worse, Guinea is extremely awkward as a ranged calf when it is one of the most competitive archetypes in this game, and I guarantee that you will want to run way more units over her. Really, I can't think of a single reason to run her when she's outclassed in every single possible use case. She's hardly unique, she really isn't useful, and she's definitely not uniquely useful, but providing lackluster support is arguably better than providing no support at all, so while she avoids D tier for now, I only see her getting worse and worse and I really don't want to use her either. Then we have Rearmed Robin, the best rearmed armor in the game. Uh, but, but actually, she's the only rearmed armor in the game, so at that point, she's also the worst. She's really just a save unit when her weapon is not good, since it only gives her a guaranteed follow-up attack, true damage even with AoEs, and 7 HP healing. But it's really not a lot, especially compared to what it takes to survive the crazy nukes of today. While she got slightly better with things like Counter Roar, it's not really enough, and being an armor might be one of the most demanding archetypes in this game, while also being one of the most competitive. And when she only has three effects in the weapon, there's no way she would stand out. At this point, both Kanas have arguably better weapons than hers since they come with flat damage reduction. And if you combine that with Robin's A skill, which gives her special charging, debuffs, and most importantly, it neutralizes effective against armored foes, Robin isn't exactly horrible. While I'm not that big of a fan of effects that only apply in a few matchups, neutralizing effective against armored foes is actually one of the best things a save can have. Since really, you want your save to take a hit and ideally survive, and neutralizing this bonus can mean the difference between a winning and losing matchup. And also, her being colorless makes her a better save and especially near saver than you'd expect. Ultimately, Robin is definitely far from the worst armor in the game, 
but she can't compete against the best armors in the game either, and at this point, you'd be lucky if she survives more than one round of combat against anything even remotely good. But just being a save is better than being Reinhardt, and I consider her ability to be a sack of potatoes more useful than just Flash and Discord, and that's why I put her here even above Guinea at her best. In general, even though I like saves quite a lot, Robin is just sorta unique, sorta useful, but middling otherwise, and when you have way better options, you probably don't want to run her either. Then we have Rearmed Ingrid. For the longest time, she came out with the best arcane weapon ever made when it gave her speed-based true damage even with AoEs, it neutralizes her foe's bonuses, and it gave her speed-based null follow-up, which of course, she can use quite well when she's one of the fastest units in the game. This alone is enough to make Alfred cry, but then, she comes with one of the best effects in the game, Kanto built right into her A skill, which is huge, since otherwise, you'd have to run Kanto in your B skill, and it also frees up that slot to run things like Guard Bearing 4 or Gambit. Not to mention that she also gets 7 HP healing, and she neutralizes her penalties. She's definitely not bad, and she has a few things going for her, but it's actually not a lot because beyond just her A skill, she really doesn't have anything unique. Offensively, I would call her worse than Summer Male Chess, a grail unit of all things because he comes with unconditional brave on both player phase and enemy phase. So at that point, the only thing Ingrid has going for her is her ability to run guidance support and not be the worst flyer in the game. Being a flyer is one of the best archetypes to be right now, and it's made even better now that she has rearmed unit privilege, meaning she can run Soaring Echo and free up her C skill to run whatever else she wants, like Rain Snap, Crux, or Deadly Miasma. Or if you really wanted, she could run both Soaring Echo and Guidance 4, but she's far from the best flyer and she's not even the best rearmed flyer, when there's three other rearmed flying units I like more than her, so not even her rearmed privilege is that unique. While she's useful, she's not particularly more effective than any other flyer in the game worth caring about, and that's why I can't put her any higher. Although I put her above Robin, not only because I like guidance support more than save support, but even at their worst, I think Ingrid as a flyer provides more utility and support than Robin, and definitely more utility and support than Guinea. But Ingrid doesn't really have anything making her unique when you can even outsource Kanto now, so I only see her getting worse and worse as they make better melee flyers and flyers in general. Then we have rearmed Krom. This guy is not good, and the sad part is that I really wanted to use this guy, but unlike every other Krom alt, he just fell off, and I guess that's why he's fallen Krom. I know it's insane to put a unit with a reposition that lets him act again this low, but you have to take a look at his kit and realize what exactly makes all the other Krom alts so broken. It's really the synergy between the assist and the weapon that makes all of the other Krom so good. Whether it be granting special cooldown, stacking stats like crazy, stealing entire effects, or the ridiculous cringe they called Hush Spectrum, Fallen Krom just inflicts exposure, and it's not even splash exposure since it won't splash to the whole enemy team if they aren't a save unit. And then his weapon gives him special charging, DR on the first hit, and speed based null follow up, which is nice but it's not a lot, and the bigger issue here is that his weapon lacks any synergy with his assist, since they knew his arcane sword was going to be inheritable, and when his preference assist is this underwhelming, this Krom simply isn't as good as any of the other broken Krom ults. Exposure isn't a horrible effect, but it's not a meta-breaking one when it only gives a slight increase on the damage your enemies will be taking, and we're reaching legendary Lucina levels of unimpactful with his assist when exposure is one of the most common effects in the game now with the rise of ploy, so there's no way I'm wasting an entire action or team slot just to inflict it. Not to mention that even if you land exposure, it hardly matters when you have all these lasagna layers of damage reduction. Power creep has come so incredibly far that I can't believe I'm saying this, but we've reached a point where even the privilege of amazing action economy isn't that unique, when you have so many better options in this game that can do it better than Rearmed Krom, and that's why I only see him getting worse and worse. He's really just a sabotage reposition bot that can act again, and otherwise he's not really unique at all, especially not in combat. That being said, I still like him better than everyone we've talked about so far, and I can't ever call him truly bad with To Change Fate, and it helps that it gives him the largest threat range in the game when he can move 6 spaces after he repositions someone, and the order of C tier depends on the exact order you like Discord with Flash, Saves, Guidance, and Reposition. Even with all of his downsides, I still like Krom the most for his action economy, but he could have been one of the most broken units in the game like all the other Krom alts, and now he's just a unit you don't see anymore, and that's why this rearmed unit flopped. All four of these units support the team more than Reinhardt, but Guinea's support isn't that good. Robin's only here because I like saves more than Guinea, Ingrid's only here because I like guidance more than Robin, and Krom's only here because I like reposition more than Ingrid. Together, they belong in C tier. Then we have rearmed Sonya. For my money, she's the best rearmed range infantry in the game. 
What makes her so good is that her kit is incredibly synergistic in making her an incredibly reliable and effective AoE nuker. Not only is her stat spread innately amazing, since her base attack stat is the highest in the game, but her preference A skill also gives her an additional 8 to attack in the rest of her stats, which is incredibly useful because AoE damage scales specifically off of your visible attack. This makes her not only one of the most powerful AoE nukers, but also one of the best since her A skill also charges her AoE special every single turn, and it also neutralizes guard, meaning it's a safe bet that this AoE will go off. This alone is enough to make Ophelia cry, and I just wish Sonya had an even better weapon, since it really just gives her a guaranteed follow-up, special charging, and it neutralizes bonuses. It's really not a lot, and she would have liked a weapon that gave her true damage even with AoEs, and unlike Alcrest with his bows, there aren't really any other weapons she can use instead. However, the bigger issue is that even at Sonya's best, she's just an AoE nuker that doesn't provide any support, and she's also slow, meaning as AoE damage reduction becomes more prevalent, she will struggle to do the one thing that she's good at. She's a decent infantry mage and AoE nuker, but she's not the best at it, and unlike Igreen or even other AoE nukers, Sonya doesn't support the team at all. So at this point, she's really nothing special and she'll only continue to get worse as they make better units in her archetype. AoEs are currently really good and will always be relatively good, and that's why I put her above everyone in C tier. You certainly feel the impact of an effective, self-sufficient, reliable, and powerful AoE nuker like Sonya more than some of the most mediocre support units, but as she gets outclassed in her only role, I can see her going down a bit and I can't put her any higher than this. Sonya is a great AoE nuker, and that's an amazing role to do so well, but she's not the best at it, she's not that unique, and she doesn't really do anything else, so I can't put her any higher than B tier. Then we have Rearm Tana. I cannot believe they made her right after they made Alfred, <laughs> and she terrorized Faye when she came out for good reason, when she not only came with Guidance 4, one of the best skills ever made, but she also came with Kanto 1, just all the time on a ranged unit, and she has some of the best mobility in the game, when she herself can move to any space within two spaces of any ally within two spaces. This is insane. As if she wasn't good enough to be a walking, talking beacon of guidance, support, and mobility, she also debuffs the enemy team just for fun. Having great mobility on the thing that's supposed to give the rest of your team great mobility is ridiculous, and somehow, she has gotten even better when she might be the best user of rearmed unit privilege. She already loves the fact that she can run Soaring Echo, meaning it frees up her C skill to run things like Guidance 4, Rain Snap, Deadly Miasma, just anything she wants really. But she got significantly better now that she can use the bow from Alcrest, since it has built-in desperation, which of course, Tana will be using very well when she's the fastest unit in the game, and this weapon is way better than what she came with, since that one only gave her a guaranteed follow-up attack, 30% DR on the first hit, and some bonuses. I will say that even with Arcane Darkbow, I'm a little wary about her offenses since she doesn't really have anything unique about her in combat, and that's why I couldn't put her in S tier, since I really only see her getting worse, and at first, I was even debating whether or not she deserved A tier, but her being a ranged flyer with insane amounts of proximity warping and Kanto 1 and Guidance Support is what makes her a menace since she has insane innate mobility typically only afforded to melee flyers since they're the only ones that can run aerial maneuvers, meaning Tana as a ranged unit has mobility like any other ranged flyer. For her usefulness to the team while also having access to great weapons and great stats, that's why I put her here. Then we have Rearm Lucina. Now this is how you do a rearmed unit with a preference assist. Just by having a preference swap that lets you act again would save her from D tier, but she's this high because it gives her and her ally 40% DR on the first hit, which is a bonus, and then treachery, which is another bonus that deals additional damage equal to the amount of bonuses you have. And it also doesn't inflict isolation on her, meaning Lucina can totally do this all over again if she wanted, or she can attack, or really, just do whatever she wants. This insane support is not only incredibly flexible, but it ends up being really good in practice. This alone makes her definitely better than Reinhardt, and as if that still wasn't enough, they gave her what is probably the best arcane weapon in the game. First, it gives her stats, then it debuffs the enemy stats, then it penalizes the enemy for having the debuffs you just gave them, then it neutralizes full tempo while having speed-based null follow-up, which of course she will be using when she's tied for the fastest unit they've ever made in this game. The debuffs are a reason why you might even prefer this over the Devoted Axe, so not only does she have a massive stat swing in practice, but she and your allies can deal massive amounts of damage. And also, Lucina has one of the largest threat ranges in the game when she can move 3 spaces, swap forward 1 space, move from another 3 spaces, and hit you from 7 tiles away. Ultimately, I like both Lucina and Tana quite a bit, and I was debating between the two of them for a long time, but in the end, I put Lucina here because she's arguably just as good while being more unique than Tana is. 
Tana is great, but other than being ranged, she doesn't have anything unique compared to units like Legendary Alincia, or really anyone running guidance support and aerial maneuvers. And to make things even worse for her, Tana really isn't the best offensively, compared to Lucina, who can definitely take care of herself both in combat and out of combat. I can see Lucina going down a bit, depending on how much we value her preference swap in the long run, especially since I'm already not crazy about the DR support that she gives, and if they make another broken Lucina ult on the level of this duo female Robin, you probably don't want to run this Lucina. But her ability to be so good in combat, as a support with incredible flexibility, and action economy while also having access to a great weapon like her axe, cannot be understated. And that's why I put her here. Then we have Rearm Plumeria. Her Attuned Peony and Attuned Azura are some of the best dancers in the game when they have rearmed unit privilege, meaning they're the only ones that can make use of all rearmed weapons while still keeping their preference dance, with complete freedom to run any broken X skill in the game. Whereas every other dancer is stuck with an arguably outdated preference dance at best, and at worst, they don't even have a preference dance and they can only make use of X skills, rearmed weapons, and be generic. Dancers especially being able to run X skills like Soaring Echo or Wings of Mercy while keeping their preference dance means they're absolutely amazing supports both actively and passively. And dancers are some of the best aging units in the game when they let all of your best units move again. It's no surprise she belongs at the top, but the reason why I didn't put Plumeria in S tier is because I'm actually not fond of her weapon or her preference dance. First, her weapon is kind of whatever, since it only gives her a guaranteed follow-up attack and 30% DR on the first hit, although I do like the true damage even with AoEs. But my biggest issue is her preference dance, which only debuffs the enemy team, then it gives foe penalty doubler which has good synergy with the debuffs, and it gives charge. I understand that if you told this to anyone back in book 1, this alone would blow their minds, but we've reached a point where we are swimming in dancers that are not only incredibly broken, meaning even just being a dancer now is competitive, but nowadays the cost of action economy is so high that even dancers now have to justify their team slot over the most broken monsters in the game like the Kroms or Duo Robin. At this point, you have to ask yourself how much you like charge and foe penalty doubler. And to be honest, I'm not really sure if I do. Foe penalty doubler is okay, but I don't love it when I'd rather have a more meaningful effect. And then we have charge, which used to be nice at first, but now who cares when charge is so easily accessible with legendary Hinoka, giving it to multiple people all at once if you were a flyer. And it's just so much better for action economy when you can get it just by standing there as opposed to Plumeria, who has to waste an entire turn and her whole action. And even now, you don't even want Hinoka when Easter Chloe can just give charge to everyone, regardless of the unit type. Even if you want to charge, you simply have easier and better ways to do it, and if you wanted a dancer, you have better and more effective dancers you can use than Plumeria. When your weapon is not good and your preference dance is not good, I wouldn't be surprised if she gets worse. And in fact, I don't like her preference dance and weapon so much that I almost put her below Lucina and Tana, especially since from an action economy standpoint, Lucina's swap is better than Plumeria's dance that has to take up her entire action. But even at Plumeria's worst, She's definitely more useful than Reinhardt, and I think she will age better than even Lucina and Tana due to her rearmed unit privilege while being a dancer, and the combination of that plus her insane utility, support, class type, and resilience to aging is why she's so amazing. I couldn't reasonably put her any lower than this if I tried, and that's why she's one of the best rearm units ever made. Tana, Lucina, and Plumeria are amazing units and as a support. They contribute so much to your team, and they easily belong in A tier as some of the best rearmed units in the game. But they're not the best rearmed unit in the game. There's this one unit, who's a support so good they can do so many incredibly effective things all at once just by sitting there. They elevate your team so well that there is no doubt in my mind that this is the best rearmed unit in the game. They are so good that I can't even put them into S tier. I present to you, in S plus tier, we have Rearmed Hortensia. On release, everyone was too busy looking at Attuned Ivy and Soaring Echo, when we should have realized IS has just given us the best rearmed unit in the game and one of the best support units they've ever made. She heals all of your allies for 7 HP, because why not? She has a guaranteed follow-up attack, special charging, and true damage, because why not? She neutralizes the penalties on herself and her team just for fun. She inflicts panic, oh sorry, splash panic because she feels like it. She inflicts discord just to put Guinea even further into the grave. She gives one of the best effects in the game, Kanto of all things because she wasn't good enough without it. She inflicts flash from her special just to make Guinea even more worthless. She comes with rearmed unit privilege and runs soaring echo for even more support. She can heal your team even further with a new healing assist. And then she can move again. Who did this? 
Staff units have gotten better and better with all of these new skills, and Hortensia is the culmination of all of them. Not only is Hortensia providing more support than Reinhardt could ever dream of, but she's doing this from not just two, but three spaces away, which is insane and so incredibly good with the rise of Discord, Ploy, and Sanaki. Even just giving Kanto alone would have made her one of the best supports in the game because of how broken Kanto is, but her doing everything else is why I like her way better than Legendary Ellie would, and I struggle to think of a unit that provides more support than Hortensia. The craziest part is that assuming they continue to give staff units new things, then Hortensia will get even better, and I can't believe I just said that. She's arguably the best user in the game of Soaring Echo, and it's why she's definitely most better than Tana. Her support is so insane that it eclipses anything Lucina can do, and most importantly, she's definitely better than Plumeria. Even though dancers are some of the most powerful supports in the game, since they are as good as the rest of the team when they let your units act again, Hortensia is even better than that because she elevates the rest of your team into doing things they simply couldn't do before. Plumeria's dance only inflicts bow penalty doubler and charge, which pales in comparison to Hortensia, which can do all of this! I cannot believe that Hortensia came from the same people that made Ganglot, Lyft, and Alfred, but her ability to inflict some of the best support effects in the game, inflicting an insane amount of support effects in general, rearmed unit privilege, the rise of staff units, while being a flyer and her being a competent unit is why she belongs in S plus tier, and why she's definitely the best rearmed unit in the entire game. Hortensia is so good that there's a visible gap between her and the rest of the rearmed units, and I don't understand why they made her this good. In fact, Hortensia is so good that I actually think she's a better support than this one unit I talked about in my Earth Legendary tier list. Check it out if you want to hear my thoughts on them. If you made it to the end and you're not subscribed yet, then subscribe so you don't miss future uploads, and I'll see you again real soon.